Good morning fellow residents, commuters and supporters. My name's Michael Angelkovic and I'm here to talk about the car parking crisis here at Edmondson Park and Leppington stations. Now, on the 12th of March, 2018, I started a petition to call for multi-level car parking at the two stations, simply because nothing was being done. Commuters are being forced to park all over the place and the current infrastructure at Edmondson Park and Leppington stations are just inadequate and are not coping with the current demands required on the car parks, nor will they cope with the future demands. And the government doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. So I was inspired by an article in the local paper. I started the petition on the 12th of March and in 14 days, more than 5,000 people signed the petition online. What a great community-based effort. And now we're going to take this petition to the government and call for more parking now. Edmondson Park and Leppington Station, the Southwest Line, was open in 2015. Now, just prior to that, the current Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, who was a Transport Minister, and she said words to the effect of, it can be so frustrating driving around looking for a car parking spot. Melanie Gibbons, who's the member for Holsworthy, opened Holsworthy Station with another 150 spots, who was also involved in trying to secure more spaces at Holsworthy, also said, it can be so frustrating driving around looking for a car parking spot. And finally, in June 2016, at the opening of the Holsworthy car park, Andrew Constance, the current transport minister, turned around and said, you can see people are fed up with driving around and around looking for a car parking spot. How do you find the parking here at Edmondson Park Station? I find it horrible. I mean, it's just after 7.30 in the morning and there is no parking available. I've had to walk quite uh, a while, about 10, 15 minutes to just come here. If I have class like at 10 o'clock, I normally have to come here at 9, but the station's for by at least 7.30, so I have to be here by 7.30, otherwise... Well, we found the chocker block at 7 o'clock. Oh, there you go. Coming back of an evening, how do you feel walking to back to your car 10 or 15 or 20 minutes away? Yeah, I feel unsafe. I feel really unsafe. Um, just getting here by 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, it's dark, there's no street lighting, and having to walk all the way down the road um, with, with minimal lighting and cars coming past, I just feel unsafe. Is the parking adequate, do you feel? Oh, absolutely not. It's such a high risk thing, like people parking in no parking zones and in pedestrian areas. Someone could get hurt very easily. Have you copped a fine? I have, yeah. I have, yes. I got to park 15 minutes away to get, away to get to the station. There's lots of construction going on, so off-street car park is limited. It's a dangerous little bit to even park there sometimes because their trucks are coming. You don't know what happened to your glass, like my car glass broken twice. The biggest problem is there's nothing in you know, walking, so your kids' daycare is not walking, your school is not walking, so you have to use a car. Yes. There's no option that you can just use a public transport or on-demand transport, because you can't. I, I don't feel I can park at Edmondson Park Station in the future. I've actually just started driving to work now because even though the commute takes longer, I know that at the end I'll be able to find a parking spot even if I have to pay for it and I know it's a safe parking option for me. I have to drive between 50 minutes to an hour each way to wow. get to my work uh, as opposed to I guess a 5 to 10 minute drive to the station and then a much less commute time on the train. So you're adding to the parking problems and, and, the, and the, the congestion. congestion. The road. I know, I feel terrible, but I don't want to compromise my safety. We're here near the front of Leppington Primary School. Now, there's a real issue and a real problem here with the overflow car parking from the station. As you can see, behind me and on both sides of the road, the station is about four to 500 metres away from the school and the cars, the overflow is parked all the way back past the school. The government really needs to take action on this issue because it's really affecting the safety and security of the community here in this area. The car parking situation here at Leppington Primary School is dangerous. Something needs to change, otherwise one of our children are going to get hurt. They're parking yeah. right down here. Look at this, this is a bus stop. It's 400 metres to the train station from the Leppington Primary School and it is backed up. In the morning it's not as bad, but of an afternoon, it's just, it's hectic. We've got cars, we've got trucks driving past, we've got buses coming past and we're trying to get our kids to and from the car. And it's just, you can't, you so can't park. We're here petitioning because it's dangerous. I mean, to get our children to and from the car, it's dangerous. We're here in Byron Road near Leppington Station and we've come across this poor guy this morning. Yeah, so as you can see, come in here, try to park to get my train and I've been bogged down. 
front two wheels are stuck in the mud and I can't get it out at all. Do we need a multi-level car park at the stations? Yes, and it should have been done in the first place. I can't see, I don't see why the government has a lack of foresight you know, with these type of things. So. 12 months ahead of schedule and 300 million below budget, do you think that time and money should have been invested in multi-level car parks? Definitely, yes. So obviously they, they were happy with saying, yep, we're under budget, but obviously, you know, it, it, uh, as a savings measure, it all looks good, doesn't it? But in reality, we all knew what was going to happen. The parking here is pretty atrocious. Um, we, we've tried to go into town by train many times and uh, there's no parking here. I mean, you just got to look down the road. It goes a couple of hundred yards down the road near the school, down the side streets. And anybody, you know, wanting to go by train, uh, at uh, this time of the morning she's got no chance of parking here. Mate and I went around to all the stations in the area and we found that we couldn't get a parking spot anywhere. We can't find any parking, we've got to usually park down near the school and then by the time we walk back we miss our trains, miss our appointments, always late for everything. When I walk um, my double pram with the kids from my house, there's like no footpath, there's only the footpath on Brinjali Road and then to cross over it's dangerous because there's so much traffic and then once you get onto the train station road there's no crossings, there's no lights, there's no nothing. Just eight weeks ago I started the call for more parking now at Leppington Station. I started off here at six o'clock in the morning asking commuters to sign an electronic petition for multi-level car parking. In the last eight weeks over five and a half thousand people have signed the online petition for more parking now because of the commuter car parking crisis that we are experiencing at Leppington Station and Edmonton Park stations. During those last eight weeks, not only have I approached commuters and who have signed, but I've also approached five state government MPs, three local councils, with all three mayors and all the councillors on those councils asking for letters of support. Now, in the local papers a couple of weeks ago, the member from Algoa stated state government was spending over $82 billion on infrastructure in the state. Well, Ms Davies, my question to you and the question that commuters have for you is how much of that money is being spent on the stations here at Leppington and Edmonton Park? The member from Macquarie Fields has stated that the problems for the car parking are all the fault of the current Liberal government. Well, the Liberal government has been in for seven years but the plans for the car parks and the stations were drawn up under the Labor government. So that's not a fair call either. I'm saying to both the Liberal and the Labor parties, stop the party politics. Stop playing the blame game and start working towards getting stuff done for the people. That's what MPs are elected for, to get things done for the residents, irrespective of your party. Yes, it's a Liberal government now, but we need a commitment to get a multi-level car park built at Leppington and at Edmondson Park because there is a commuter crisis. The parking that was provided by the Department of Transport planning people just is not good enough. There's not sufficient infrastructure to cope with the situation now and there definitely won't be enough car parking for the future. Now I've had letters from the New South Wales Department of Transport who say the state government is committed to making life easier for commuters and that over 8,000 car parking spots are planned to be put into areas near the stations. So the question for Mr Rod Staples, who's the Secretary of Sydney Trains, how many of those 8,000 planned spots are earmarked for Leppington and Edmonton Park? Can you tell us, please? The initial objective when I set out and started the petition was to get a commitment from both the Liberal and Labor Party to build multi-level car parks at Edmonton Park and Leppington. The Labor Party has made a commitment to Edmondson Park only. Now we need one for Leppington and we need the Liberal Party to make a commitment to both Edmondson Park and Leppington. I'm waiting to get an appointment with the Minister. I will be presenting this petition with all the information. There it is there, over 400 pages to the Minister. And this is a community-based petition asking the Minister and the Government to commit to building multi-level car parkings for Leppington and Edmondson Park. Thank you for all your support and I hope the Government gets behind us and supports this community. I'm Michael Angelkovich, thank you very much.